there's been a game that's getting a lot of traction for one reason or another. And when you look at those overall reviews, surely we've gotta be in for something special tonight, right? Mac cheese to host, and tonight we're reviewing The Coffin of Andrew and Laylee. The Coffin of Andrew and Laylee is an early access, narrative-driven game fresh out of RPG Maker. Now before I start the review, I wanna first off address that we are reviewing an early access version of the game. The game is planned to have four episodes, but only two have been released so far. And just to get it out of the way, because I'm sure there's gonna be people who ask, well, Mac, is it really fair to review a game that is isn't finished yet? To that I say, is it really fair to release a game that isn't finished yet? Here at Genovision, we have a pretty simple philosophy. If it's good enough to be released, it's good enough to be reviewed, and it's no different for early access. If you want the most optimal review of your game, you should release it in its most optimal state. The Coffin of Andrew and Laylee is about two siblings, Andrew, the normal level-headed person, and Laylee, the quirky and upbeat one, who, as the game puts it, is very not good and, in fact, very bad. Holy Tumblr, Batman. So quirky. The game starts with the two of you escaping from a quarantine apartment, but not before offering up a soul to a demon who then gives you the ability to see visions of the future in your dreams. From there, you're keeping a low profile to evade authorities while other shenanigans ensue. But for the most part, the game's about the troubled relationship between Andrew and Laylee. As the game progresses, you see how they interact with each other, and the game eventually opens up their past, and you kind of see the people that they really are. The gameplay, if you're generous enough to call it that, is extremely basic. If I had to describe it, it's basically a point-and-click game in RPG format. All you really have to do is interact with the right item and the story progresses. The closest it really gets to actual gameplay are these dream sequences. It's really just a matter of finding the correct path to the ending. It's not challenging at all, it's just kind of there. There are no real game mechanics here. It's pretty obvious that this is a story-driven experience and the gameplay is more of a formality. Speaking of which, the story. Honestly, it's not much to write home about. I mean, don't get me wrong, while the game lasts, it's a pretty decent, dare I say, relatively enjoyable experience. But it's not particularly moving or memorable. It doesn't really stand out among the vast sea of narrative-driven games or visual novels or what have you. If this game was a book, I sincerely doubt it would stand out amongst the young adults section at your local library. If I had to ultimately describe it in one word, it would be disposable. All right while it lasts, but nothing beyond that. And I don't like saying stuff like that because admittedly I have no way to really prove it. If there's nothing to say about a game, I can't tell you why there's nothing to say about it because there's nothing to say about it. What am I supposed to do? You know what I'm saying? All I can really say is if you're willing to take things at face value, it's all right. Think of it as a mediocre movie. It's good if you just turn your brain off. If we really have anything to say, it's that we're really not big fans of the whole serious level-headed character juxtaposed with the quirky, loose cannon one. Granted, some people might like that dynamic, others might not. There might be people out there who think that it's lazy, overused, and annoying. They might go as far as to call it a crutch. There's a lot of moments in the game that seem pretty tense and heavy and serious, but they're pretty difficult to take seriously because Miss Corky over here just has to make her little quips. What I think the game's trying to do is hammer in that, oh, this isn't a good character. She can't take these important situations seriously. She is clearly not in a stable, mental state. But honestly, it just makes the writing feel incredibly amateurish. Other than that, it doesn't really feel like the game has any direction. It really falls off by the second episode. The plot development feels pretty minimal, with subplots being briefly introduced and then swiftly hand-waved away, presumably to come up later in a future episode. Look, there's some interesting stuff that goes on. But by the episode's end, you don't really feel like you've progressed the plot in any meaningful way. You don't feel like you're any closer to the end, whatever that may entail, because there's no overarching plot that's really been established. It feels like it's treading water. It really just comes down to the pitfalls of releasing a story-driven game without half its actual story. Now look, I'm sure it'll all coalesce in the end. I'm sure there's an idea of where the story's gonna go from here, but that doesn't really matter because it's not in the game yet. So you're just kind of left with a half-baked product that can't really maintain interest. I suppose it's worth noting that choices do technically matter. There are technically different outcomes that the game offers. Like I said, a demon comes along and gives you the ability to see into the future in your dreams, which does does happen a couple of times, notably towards the end of the second episode. There are different dreams that you can get, and which dream you'll get is dependent on the choices you make as the game goes on. Again, these are dreams. By all means, they just predict the future, so it's not really stuff that's actually happening, but it's worth pointing out. Other than that, the story will mostly play out the same on each playthrough. Again, the game's not finished, so the full extent of what the choices will entail largely remains to be seen. The music is bad. That is the one thing that I am completely unwilling to concede 
cheat on. It is painfully stock and royalty free. And it really just cheapens the experience. Just listen to the main menu. This is the first impression you'll have of the game, and it sounds like it came out of one of those e-cards a co-worker would send you for Halloween. In the actual gameplay, the music doesn't do a very good job of immersing you in the setting. In fact, it often does the opposite. It's quite annoying and frankly takes away from the experience. Honestly, it made me want to rip my ears out, which I'm not actually sure if that would do anything, but it's what I wanted to do. The best moments of the game is when the music finally dies down, and at last you're left with silence. Blissful silence. If there's anything good I have to say about the game, the graphics are respectable. It clearly has an aesthetic, it's very depressing, very dark and gritty, and nails it pretty well. Nothing more to say on it, make your own conclusions. And I think that's it, we're ready to wrap this whole thing. <laughs> Okay, I gotta talk about it. The incest crap. It's pretty much the only reason this game has any traction at all, which may or may not say something about it. Obviously, the game centers around Andrew and Laylee, brother and sister. Laylee is over-obsessed with their brother. There's a lot of dialogue showcasing that the two are pretty tightly knit. The game, of course, features a lot of artwork where the two come into close bodily contact with each other, but for the most part, it never really becomes explicit. It comes off more so as platonic than anything else. Sibling love, I suppose. Save for a singular scene where the game just really drops drops the ball. Basically, if you play the game right, you can unlock a specific type of scene. Without spoiling too much, it's a dream sequence where a vision is given of the future, and yeah, in it the two implicitly have sex. It's not actually shown, and it is a dream sequence, so it doesn't actually happen, technically. It's not even fan service, dude, it's just coomer bait. There is literally nothing else to say about it. Okay, cool, sex. Moving on. But hey, as long as it can prop up an otherwise completely uninteresting game, who cares? Overall, we've said a few things about the game, but we're pretty unmoved by it. The art's alright, the gameplay's unimpressive, the story's interesting at points, but not really engrossing. It's just one of those medias that just kind of exists. Honest to God, I wish I had more to say about it, but I honestly don't. It just doesn't stand out to us, it's not a unique product, we have no strong opinions on the game either way. I'm gonna give the coffin of Andrew and Laylee a middling score of 5 out of 10. Not really good, not really bad, just kind of there. As far as recommendations go, I mean, I guess I wouldn't not recommend it. It's a somewhat enjoyable experience to lose yourself in, if not just for a few hours. Other than that, it's a popular game worth 10 bucks. Not a lot of money to part with, even if you're just FOMOing in. And I mean, I guess the game has potential to be alright. Based on what we've seen so far, we're not expecting a masterpiece, maybe just something that can provide a decent experience for the money you pay for it, but that's really it. We will, of course, revisit the game when it's actually finished, but hopefully this review will suffice for the time. Time being. And that is our review of The Coffin of Andrew and Laylee. Now, if you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. You've just watched a video from the Jetavision. If you want to keep up to date with our game and movie reviews, subscribe to the channel, follow the Twitter, and join the Discord. Mac Cheese to Jetavision, signing out. You all have a good night. Please.